All right, we are at Frogtown today. Check it out. Here with the crew, we're gonna be doing the new beer. Yeah. Okay, all right, Beachcombers Gold, Don Beach inspired, part of their Tiki series here. Our secret just at Don Beach. <laughs> we, we've got some of the guys here from Frogtown. We've got Gustavo, one of the partners. We've got Adam, he's the main brewer. And then we've got Alex from the Don of Tiki. So this is a collab we're doing for uh, in respect to Don the Beachcomber and tribute to one of his awesome cocktails. So uh, I'm gonna send you over to Adam now. He's gonna tell us how this beer is going to be made. So what these tanks all are. Uh, so this bar tank over here on your right uh, is our hot liquor tank. So that tank is just gonna be, so basically it's a giant hot water tank. It's where we bring all of our water up to the tap uh, for the brew day. We'll transfer that hot water mix it with the grain into this tank here. This is called the mash tun. So it'll come through this uh, auger system, down to this crisp hydrator, and it'll spin around this mash tun um, and, and break up all of that grain and convert the starches and the grain into sugars. We'll extract that sugar water, so there's a grain at the bottom. It's called wort at this point. We'll extract the wort off the bottom of this tank, pump over into this tank. Uh, this is our boil kettle. So in here we'll bring it up to a boil. Boil it for about 60 minutes, depending on the recipe. Typically, 60 minutes is what we usually boil for. Um, then we'll transfer from this tank to that last tank over there. That's called our whirlpool. That's where it's going to spin around. Any solids that are left in there, we'll, we'll consolidate out, um, and then we'll add any other additions in there, any spices, uh, hops, that sort of stuff that we want to add in the whirlpool. We'll do that at that point. Pass it through our giant plate filler. So we have a two-stage plate chiller at the end. Um, the first stage is just ground cold water. The second stage is glycol that's circulating around 25 degrees. So it goes into that at almost boiling, comes out at 65, 67 degrees, whatever we want to fit there. After it comes out of the plate chiller, we'll oxygenate it, hook up to a hose and go into one of these tanks. Um, so we're going into one of these 15 barrel cylinders today. Um, and in there we'll add the yeast. So what the yeast will do is we'll take all that sugar that we created with the brewing process, uh, convert it into CO2 and alcohol. So um, the way we can tell how much alcohol we've created is we take a measurement after we're done brewing. Uh, that's our original gravity uh, for the batch. And then we'll take another measurement uh, of the gravity at the end of fermentation, and that will be our final gravity measurement. We compare the original gravity to the final gravity. We can say how much sugar was eaten up by the yeast. That's exactly how much alcohol you need. Um, once we're done with the uh, fermentation process, we'll then transfer it over to our bright tank, which is on the back side of the tanks here. The bright tank is where we do all the carbonation. So we'll add CO2 through uh, a carbonation stone inside the tank. We'll carbonate that for a couple hours. We'll also cool it down in that tank, down to you know, 33, 34 degrees. Inject that CO2, carbonate it up. We let it sit in that tank for a couple days, um, anywhere from one to three days, depending on the batch and how quickly we need to recover that tank. Um, from there, it'll go into some sort of package. So either kegs for distribution, service in our cold room, uh, or it'll go into cans. Uh, this particular batch will be doing a little bit of splitting that batch, about 50% cans, 50% um, in, in draft. Um, and then it's ready for consumption. So all the way from grains to glass, we're anywhere from two to three weeks is our typical schedule uh, when these will come out. Awesome, exciting stuff. So we're doing all that today. We're yeah. doing all of that today, actually we yeah. are, except yeah. on that bright tip of the end. Yeah. So I think we went over to what we're doing today. Great. Um, and then the half of the bright tank will be done. Kind of the so like, cool. we'll also add like uh, any fruit or spices or anything like that, that we're gonna add it to it during fermentation or the bright tank is any out of here. Cool. I think we're gonna play with some yeast today. Yeah. And we'll be adding a little bit of an yeast in the whirlpool. So I'll awesome. probably get some star anise and throw that in there. Will we be able to see what that's gonna taste like at all today? Or yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we have some extract to try and sample it. Oh, so we'll bring some anise oh. extract and mix that with one of our light and we'll see how that tastes. And um, get an idea of how much we want to use for the final yeah. product. So it's a strong flavor. So. Yeah.